Whenever I'm working on a documentary, I'm always looking for what I call opportunities. Well, what's an opportunity? Well, I'm looking for a setup that's used multiple times throughout the film so that I can slow down and really fine tune that image. And once I've spent a little bit of time on it, I can reapply that look over and over again. And one of the most common places where you're gonna find an opportunity in any kind of documentary reality-based type of production is interview setups. It's oftentimes the only place where the director has sat down, they're able to set up lighting, they're able to position the subject exactly where they want, they'll actually make changes to the props and around the room, and you get really a crafted image out of the can, and that gives you time as a colorist a great place to sit down and really enhance what's already there. So let's take a look at shots 12 and 22, and this is a perfect example of an interview being used multiple times. And it means that if we spend extra time working on Kristen, it's okay because all of that work has value every time we come back to this interview shot. So what might I want to do to this image to make it a little more dynamic? All right, obviously there's a vignette. That's always a great place to start, but actually I'm thinking more along the lines of her skin tones and just kind of pulling out her eyes and her face generally. I'm gonna option S, and I've added another corrector down here. You can see it down here in the keyframes. I'm also gonna set this down to color, so if we start keyframing, I'm only keyframing this particular node. And let's go ahead, add a shape, and I'll use the control surface to quickly isolate her face. Soft, I'll make it a little small. And I'm going to make sure I'm on the first frame of this shot. And let's go ahead and track forward. Yeah, great. That's a great track. Let me make sure we're in loop. And I'll hit play. Yeah, that's a great track. That'll be terrific. Now I'll just select another control so I lose the wireframe. And I'm going to pull up the highlights just a touch. And I'll take a little bit up on the midtones as well. All right, now I'm going to brighten up her face give a little more contrast in her face. The other thing I'm gonna do is maybe we'll play a little bit down here with the mid-tone detail. Remember, if we kick it up, we're gonna add a lot more sharpness into her face. That's not what I wanna do. In fact, I'm gonna reset this and try going the other way. What if we soften it up a little bit and it'll retain some of the detail in her eyes while kind of acting almost like a skin smoothing? I kinda of like that. Command D on and off. That's what we've done. Her highlights are getting a little bloomed out. Let me pull up the scope. So let's go to a four up and make this a little bit smaller so we can see what the heck is going on here. And I'll set this back to my Y only waveform. I'm gonna pull down these highlights just to see uh, what I might be losing. Yeah, I'm clipping out some details. So I'm gonna only pull up her highlights just until you see that it's hitting up here 1023. And I'm gonna do more of this move here in the midtones. And now let me disable this node and enable it. That's not bad. Now let's also take a look at what we can do on the rest of the room. In fact, I might even largen this up a little bit. Her neck is falling off. So let's come up to our power windows, size it up a little bit, aspect it out a little bit. Hide them and hit play. All right, that works for me. Now I'm gonna add an outside node. And let's take a look, what might we want to do on the rest of the room? Of course, we could do the classic vignette thing, drop this down a little bit, brighten up the highlights a touch. I'm really making a big move on this. And I don't mind that the blues are intensifying a little bit because if you look on your color wheel, skin tones exist in here. These blues are down here. It adds a lot of contrast. So we're actually building a lot of color contrast into this image when we go blue. And I really like that. It really pops her out. Uh, I don't mind the extra blue. It doesn't draw my eye away. And then maybe what I could do is an option L. And now we're going to do a layer mixer key. And I'm going to right click to a composite mode. Let's do a screen. Let's try a quick blur. I sometimes like to do this very quickly. We're just going to experiment. Does this work? I'm going to do a big blur. And now I'm going to combine this with a highlight key. I'm going to shift H. I'm going to do my favorite luminance key. So we're only keying out the brightest highlights right about there. Let's soften this up quite a bit. 
Tighten it up just a touch, shift H. And now if I turn this node on and off, remember it's tough to see a before and after on a, on a node feeding into a layer mixer. We have to come into the key output, set it to zero, set it to one. Yeah, I like that. So we started from where? Let's version this out. Let's go ahead and delete and delete and delete. So this is where we started after our base grade. And now I'm going to command N. And this is where we ended up. A much more compelling image. We're focused on her face. We've done a little bit of a highlight bloom, a little bit of skin softening. And if you go back when we were talking about uh, using the sharpening and the mist controls and we kind of tracked her eyes. I could probably do a little bit of sharpening on her eyes, track those eyes just a bit to kind of exclude it from some of the softening we did here on her skin.